Um, the way that you describe the, um, the state and the behavior of a particular object is, um, is that you use a class, what's called a class. And um, uh, classes are used to create objects of a particular type. So for every particular type of object, there's a corresponding class for that type. And it's um, uh, the analogy here that you sometimes see is the um, thing called um, a cookie cutter analogy, whereby um, a class is like the um, like the sort of cookie cutter, and uh, you use that to produce objects of uh, all the same type of object, each with their own particular state and um, behave, uh, their own particular state. Uh, the behavior, is, of course, is the same for all of them, and uh, that's uh, that's the um, sort of analogy which um, I suppose holds up to some extent. Right, let's look at um, some actual code to make things uh, a little bit clearer. Right, um, first of all, um, all uh, code that you write, well, at least code that actually does anything useful, so that's excluding comments and stuff like that, has to actually belong to some class or other. So classes are quite important. And um, here's an example of a class, it's, uh, it's called bank account. And um, there's the class name, bank account. And in the class are uh, three things called fields. There's the account number, which is a long. There's the balance, which is um, double. And the customer name, which is some sort of uh, character string. Now, um, these uh, fields here, that they correspond to the um, state, basically. And the behavior of the class is determined by these down here which are methods and there's two methods here there's one called deposit and uh, deposit takes an amount which is a double and uh, presumably it adds that amount onto the balance and uh, it doesn't return anything back to the piece of code that called it so the return type is described as being void and here's another method which is called withdraw and uh, it takes a double which will be the amount to take out of the account and um, it also doesn't return anything um, and if I think about that I'd have probably uh, should have put boolean there and um, then uh, it would return true all the time if it worked and if there was not enough money in the account we withdraw it could return false but um, I didn't do that because I wasn't thinking about it at the time so um, I've left that as void never mind uh, I haven't put the code in here because um, I'm not trying to emphasize how to actually code this I'm just giving a sort of layout of a class right um, now a couple of conventions um, the class name um, starts with a capital letter and if it's composed of more than one word each of the first letters of each word is in capitals so that's capital B and capital A and the same thing also applies to uh, variable names and uh, method names except the first letter is now lowercase, so you've got a lowercase a there and a capital N there. A lowercase c there, for instance, and a capital N there. So that's just a convention, by the way. You don't don't have to actually follow that, um, but since everybody does, if you don't do that, um, people will think it's very strange indeed. Right now, methods down here always have to have a return type and um, well, we're going to a lot more detail later about um, methods how you call them how you pass things to methods these are called parameters by the way and um, the uh, return type which in this case is void is used if um, there's no return result at all so if the thing that's calling this doesn't expect to get something back from it, it um, 
it so uh, is declared as void. But so uh, we'll cover this later in more detail. Right. Um, now, if you actually want to make an object of type bank account, you have to call this thing here, which is the constructor. Now, the um, this is called using the keyword new, and um, I'll show you how to do that in the next slide. But um, first things uh, to know about the constructor is that. Um, the name of the constructor has to be exactly the same as the name of the class that it's constructing, or rather the object of that uh, class type that it's constructing. So in this case, it'll have to be bank account. And the next thing to note is that there's no return type. So unlike um, methods down here, which have to have a return type, constructors don't have to have a return type. In fact, they mustn't have a return type. Apart from that, the two things, methods and constructors, look the same, but in fact they're actually quite a bit different. You could, for example, have a bank account in here, but if you did, instead of having deposit, if you had bank account, it would still be a method because it had a return type. And of course, if you were bank account in here just like that, it would um, violate the um, convention of having initial letter is lower case. But that's just a convention. Java doesn't enforce that. Now, um, there's a couple of things to notice is that you'll notice here string has got a capital letter and that's important as well. Um, and it's, um, as you might suspect, that means that string is a class. And um, we come to more discussions about string and exactly what goes on inside it some later time. Um, all right, now these things, fields, constructors and methods, um, you can put them in any order you want, in fact. Um, you, know, you can either, you can even, uh, let's just put that's a string, you could put it in between these two methods if you wanted to. Uh, there's no enforcement of order. But um, again, by convention, people tend to put fields first, then constructors, and then methods. But again, that's not enforced. Um, you can do it any way that's convenient. Right, um, I think that's about all.